Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome to my Star Wars Galaxy's Edge land review. Uh, Galaxy's Edge opened to the public last week, and I had a chance to go on Friday. And uh, I had a pretty good time, a, a good time at Disneyland in general. Um, so this is going to be my review. I try to keep this as, um, how would you say it, as um, structured as possible uh, to keep it uh, not as subjective. And... Um, I'll show you what I mean. So, when it comes to reviewing these lands, I broke it down into five different categories. The theming, environmental design, and the immersion. Do you feel like you're there, like it, like you've really escaped? Are you uh, at uh, Galaxy's Edge? The attractions themselves. In this case, there's only one, which is Smuggler's Run. The food. That's a big thing with me. I always pig out when I go to uh, theme parks, which is bad because I'm trying to lose weight. Uh, the shopping experience. I like to spend money there. And the efficiency. Uh, efficiency is really huge because if you can't move around, if you're all claustrophobic, you're just going to have a miserable time. People always underestimate how important this is when it's good, but when, when the efficiency is bad, it's horrible. So here are the different weights. Uh, the theming, environmental design, and immersion. I gave 25% to attractions. I weighted at uh, 25%. Food and shopping, about an eighth, so 12, 12.5%. And efficiency, 25%. So these are the weights that they take. So let's go through how I scored these. First is the theming and environmental design and immersion. I'm just going to show you rather than tell you. Um, right here we have the Millennium Falcon. This is the centerpiece of the whole thing. It's really breathtaking when you see it. This whole scene is planned out very well. It looks great. Um, it's really amazing. I, I can just hang out in this area, um, this Star Wars land, for hours just to take it all in. This marketplace looks great. Um, I really felt, it, it really feels like you're, you're there on one of those planets. Um, it actually, I actually feel like this area should be more crowded based on what I've seen, you know, like in the movies. But I think that was a very deliberate choice to not let that happen. The side by Critter Country is a little more empty. Um, not sure why. Maybe it's just a room thing. It's nothing with space. Uh, but they might add some more stuff there later. This side's actually, th this uh, X-Wing is actually over there on that side. Um, and it, it's just, it's fantastic. I was blown away. Whoever did the environmental design, um, they did an incredible job. Um, here's another shot of the Millennium Falcon. Um, the queue line is actually in this this tower right here where, where my mouse is. Um, at the bottom of that is where you go in, and they've got a single rider as well. So here's you got another another shot. Um, it's a, the, the, I, you you just gotta go. It's it's fun just to walk around there. It's, it's how good of a job they did. And these guys, these stormtroopers, steal the show, man. Whatever actors they hired to do this, they do an incredible job. Um, yeah, uh, they're funny, they're witty, they interact fantastically with the crowd, and they got to think on their toes, too. The voice modulator sounds really good as well. I, uh, yeah, man, they're, they're, they're fun just to follow around and see how they interact with the crowd. Chewbacca's good, too. I've, I've got a beard, and um, <laughs> if, you, if you've got a beard, Chewbacca seems to try and talk to you. Like, <laughs> and anybody with the beard, he did it to me, too. It was really fun. So as far as steaming, environmental design, and immersion go, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. So it gets the full 25 points, 25%. Okay. Now, attractions. There's only one, so this one is subject to change upon uh, Rise of the Resistance opening up. But for right now, everything's on Smuggler's Run. And these are the four categories that I broke it down into. Uh, into. Innovation. The queue experience. Very important. You don't, you don't want to wait forever just going back and forth between banisters and there's nothing to look at, right? The story. Is the story good? And really how much fun it is. I weighed these the same. Maybe I should have put more on the fun side. I think queue experience is also really important. Story, not so much, because I have some people, I know people that are completely oblivious to any story. It's like their heads in the clouds, and they're just like, I don't know, staring blank blankly at things, I don't know what's going on. And I think that might be a lot of people, actually. Now, here's the inside of the Millennium Falcon, what it looks like. Um, this is essentially Mission Space plus Star Tours. So it's not very innovative. Mission Space is a ride that I gave a 10 to, in terms of innovation. Because... I thought it was extremely clever the way they simulated the G-forces on that. Um, and Star Tours blew my mind when I first saw it. I know it's just a motion sim, but at the time, uh, that was fairly groundbreaking. I think only like the Air Force and whatnot maybe had things like that. I'd never been on anything like that. So the interactive portion actually reduces it to an extremely expensive arcade game. And really, I'd rather put a couple quarters in to one of those um, Star Wars games that you sit in and it, and it feels like you're in the cockpit of a plane. I feel like that's a little a bit more fun and I get to be the gunner and the pilot 
So I gave it a 4 out of 10. Nothing original here. They just mixed existing technologies. Now the queue experience. There are endless things to look at. This photo is taken from the queue. It's like a, a ship mechanic, uh, a ship, uh, what do you call it? A ship shop? <laughs> like a repair bay, I suppose. As you can see, there's a queue line. It, it just, you feel like you're there. And even this walkway, it doesn't really, it seems like you would have a walkway there, really, to access things. They, this this whole deal they, was incredible. There's also a really uh, great pre-show. I forgot this character's name, but his animatronic is fantastic. And Chewbacca shows up. You see the Falcon landing back there. Um, the queue moves quickly. They do a great job, man. I, I felt like I, I was in and out. I got there at rope drop, and it was about 30 minutes. And it was about 15 minutes in... Um, Single rider, so it has both. It has no fast pass, but that's okay. Now, some would say, "Well, this is pretty innovative," but I, I, I decided to use this in the queue experience because it helps it. And I, I could, you could, you could feel that it rotates when you're in there. And I, I was really confused. I was like, "Man, there's no way we enter where we exit. This thing's got to rotate and move to the side um, to keep it going." And then I saw this on Twitter, and I was like, oh, "Okay, so they've all got their dome." And really, here, th this chest room is where um, the seats are. Or the, the Millennium Falcon with the with the little chessboard, and you've got these boarding passes, and there's someone that calls your number. So then you either go into this one or this one. So all it takes is really th this slides over here, it stops, and then you you load in, and you're having your ride. You kind of move over here, having your ride, having your ride, move, having your ride, move, move, move. Then you get off, and then it moves, and the next people load in. So really, excuse me. So really, this loads in such a way that. As soon as people are on, they're on their way. Next group, next group. And you got two of those. So that line is constantly moving. This is really brilliant. Whoever thought of this, great job. And most of all, here's the chest, here's that chest room I was talking about. You get to go inside the Falcon. That that it was breathtaking. It blew my mind. Um, wow. I was like, I can't believe I'm in here. It was just it was just absolutely amazing. If anything, I, I enjoyed that more than the actual ride. Okay. So I'm giving this a 10 out of 10. As far as the Q experience, okay? So Q experience gets a 10 out of 10. Now the story. The story seemed a bit contrived just to justify the interaction portion of the ride. It's interactive. The engineers are supposed to push buttons, and you're supposed to fix the mistakes of the other crew, but am I really? Because both times I went on... The first time I waited in the queue because I wanted the queue experience, I got 100 as engineer. Then I went into single rider. If you go single rider, you're going to get engineer every time. And the story works for what it is, but it's not very interesting. You're, you're going to Corellia, which is from the Solo movie, and you're, you're bringing back um, whatever that energy stuff is for the Resistance. I feel it would be better if they did multiple stories, random stories, to give you more motivation to go on, but whatever. Um, I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. It's not very interesting, and it seemed contrived to me. And it was difficult to enjoy, really. Now, it does make sense. They're consistent through. The guy's like, yeah, we're hiring crews. We need you to go get this. Um, but it was a bit wrecked by the fun aspect. Now, look at this. This is the view you get if you sit in the back. Okay? And you're, you'd actually be off to one side. As you can see, you can't see squat if you're in the back. This sucks. This ride is clearly made to be in the front. To be the pilot, you, that's how you get the, first, the, the, the most experience, especially if you're the forward right pilot. Because then you also control the hyperdrive. I also hate that the cast member picks the roles versus random. They should they give you these cards. He should hold them up and say, take your pick. Instead, he hands them. He always gives the two people in the front, pilot, or if there's a family, they always give it to the kids. So if you're a loner like me or you're just you and a buddy that go, um, like I went with a friend, um, you're much less likely to get pilot, especially if you're a single rider. Just forget it. Okay? And except for the pilots, the roles are an afterthought. For the gunners and engineers, it actually detracts from the experience. And that is because they make you push these buttons over here on the side. These buttons here, they turn green and they light up when you're supposed to push them. And the engineers have got way more buttons to push. So you're looking this way to the side, and here's the gunner's buttons. But you should be looking that way, but you can't see anything anyway. So I think they give you more buttons to make you busy, but then you're not even paying attention to what's going on over here. These guys are looking, and these guys get a view upwards. You don't get a view upwards. You get... I mean... It, it detracts from everything. I almost prefer not to do anything. And if it, you know, it might actually be cooler not to do anything because then when you walk outside, stuff is damaged. And uh, 
it's, it's kind of cool just to see it damaged because the exit has these little things that revolve. I don't have any pictures of it, but like the, the wall panels flip around and they start smoking if you, if you really screw up. And what's even more annoying is, like I said, they always give it to the kids. So these annoying kids that smash random things or they do nothing at all, they always end up as a pilot, at least one of them. And if you're a gamer like me, you're going to be really annoyed of being forced to work with non-gamers. Like I said, both times I got 100, I don't know what they got. It's always some stupid kid up there, annoying kid, eh, eh, smash, smash. In fact, the second time that I went, it was some stupid little girl up there who did nothing but sit up there and swing her feet. While her dad, who sat next to her, had to reach over and do everything. Huh? And this girl's probably never even seen a Star Wars movie. Maybe she likes, I don't know. Huh? And to top it off, as she's walking out, she, I hear her say, uh, I didn't like it. Uh, well, then sit in the back, you little shit. Ugh. Not fun. Not fun. Rides, I think, are more fun. All these rides, I think, are more fun. Space Mountain, Splash Mountain, Big Thunder, Pirates, Haunted Mansion, Indiana Jones, Star Tours, Alice, Peter Pan, Pinocchio, Buzz Astro Blasters, The Incredible Star, Midway Mania, Guardians Breakout, and The Jungle Cruise. I would put this one around the same uh, level as I would... The teacups, small world, and I, I don't like the Matterhorn. It hurts my butt. It just I feel like I'm getting into hemorrhoids going on that ride. So I, I put it at that level. They really need to get rid of that interactive portion. And just tell a story. Just say it's on autopilot. Chewbacca's going to fly you. And they also need to take that stupid the, the window and bring it back one other panel. One more panel. If you need to extend the dome, extend the dome. But if you're not in the front, you, you've got your, your experience is not as good. And I was concerned about this when they said, you're going to get to pilot. I'm like, wait a minute, I see six people. There's no way everyone gets to pilot. And that's exactly what I feared. At least the wait isn't that long. So that's good. But sorry for fun. I gave it a 3 out of 10. I, I barely even know what was happening. I couldn't even see anything. I'm over here pushing buttons while the stupid kid that doesn't, is supposed to fly doesn't fly. So here we got 4 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 5 out of 10, 2 out of 10, which is 21 out of 40. So 13.1 out of 25% for the attractions. Right? Again, when um, Rise of Resistance comes in, this will be out of 12.5. Everything will be divided by 2, and I'll have to adjust. But for now, this is what it is. So the food. I was so looking forward to blue and green milk. They're actually pretty sad. They taste weird, and as it turns out, they're a soy drink. I threw away the green milk. I really didn't like it, and I didn't completely finish the blue, blue milk. I'm willing to try the blue milk one more time, but it's not milk. It's some soy thing because people are lactose and apparently now what I don't know I don't know if it's a generational thing with the millennials, but they seem to really think that it's cool to be a victim or to suffer some some kind of hardship or, or have an ailment. So I think all these food allergies that are coming up I'm sorry, but I, I, I don't know man. I feel like they're fabricated largely. I know with peanut allergies, that's a serious thing. People they can't breathe and all this stuff and they could die, maybe. If someone died of a peanut allergy, I guess. But anyways, um, I would much rather have the Dole Whip float. That is the cream of the crop when it comes to snacks. It remains supreme, and these things were disappointing. So the blue, I gave it a 4 out of 10. The green, a 2 out of 10. I will never have that green thing again. The blue, I'm willing to give another chance. The food. So I ate at... I only had breakfast at Docking Bay 7. I had the Bright Suns morning, and that there's a picture I took. You can see there's my blue milk. I, I never finished it completely. I had already thrown away the green milk at this point. This thing was gross. The eggs tasted like puke. That yellow thing, those are the eggs. And then this crap right here, those are the potatoes. I think they use food coloring to make it look spacey or something. Those were dry. The cinnamon bun tasted like some frozen in a box microwave garbage worth 50 cents. Um, the sausage was good. Hard to, mess, hard to mess that up. They've got this menu again. Gluten allergy friendly, egg allergy friendly, Fish shellfish allergy friendly, fish allergy friendly, soy allergy friendly, milk allergy friendly, tree nut allergy friendly, peanut allergy friendly. This is going to go away. This is way too inefficient. What percentage of the population actually have these things? And oh, we want to be inclusive to everybody. Uh, okay. I think you're hurting your bottom line when, when you're maintaining all this. You're going to maintain stock for like the two people that have soy allergies. I, I don't know, man. You know what? If, if this is a serious thing and like you touch fish and you break out into hives and you start itching and you can't breathe and you could die i feel for you but i i don't know i mean i'm quote unquote allergic to avocado but i can still have it like my throat gets kind of itchy and it hurts but i'm just like i'm not gonna i'm like yeah i'll just i'll eat it whatever man
Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know. So uh, I'm giving the Doc Seven Breakfast a three out of ten. That was gross. I have no desire to ever have it again. Cinnamon thing. It, it was just crappy. The sausage was the only good thing. I could have tossed the rest in the garbage. Ronto Roasters. Now this was actually good. I just wish I had more of this sauce. Um, I had a Ronto wrap. I liked it. The theming, the theming in all these places is actually fantastic. Um, there's a Ronto wrap right there. It's basically a hero with a sausage in it. And uh, if they put some more sauce, it could be an eight, maybe even a nine. Um, I like this. I recommend this. I, this was the best thing I had in there. So, and I just walked right up. Uh, no line. So I'm giving it a seven out of ten. Like I said, could be an eight, possibly a nine. By the way, a ten snack to me are the Dole Whips. That's a ten. Perfect. And there's other places with ten in Disneyland. I think the strawberry shortcake on Main Street, as well as the fried chicken. Oh, delicious. Now, the Oga Cantina. Cantina. You gotta get a reservation. Then they force you to sit down with random strangers in a booth. They tell you you have two drink max and gotta get out after 45 minutes. So all this hullabaloo for something that you could just... At the end of the day, you could probably just pop your head and look around, take a picture and leave. Order a drink. Just let the people take the drink out. Why, why? They're hyping this up to be more than what it is. And that's why there's a big line. The experience isn't that great. I'm giving it a minus one for overcomplicating the situation. We were in there like 20 minutes. Why would we spend 45 minutes in there to do what? And I didn't like being... I was stuck in the middle of the table. My group was in the middle. There was a party that was already sitting there to our right and one to our left. When the party to our right who was already there left, I, I was like, let me get out of here. I, I want to I walk around and enjoy the atmosphere. I don't want to sit here. They told us standing room only, but it wasn't even crowded in there. Now, I had this java juice, which is just pineapple juice. Still not as good as the Dole Whip. However, it was delicious. It was refreshing. I give it an 8 out of 10. I also had this thing called the Batu Bites. I don't have a picture. It had, like, if you've ever eaten, like, that, been to, a, like, a space museum, and they have that astronaut ice cream. It was the chocolate ice cream, which was freeze-dried. Um, there was fried seaweed wrap and this other strange paper-thin stuff uh, that was on the, the wasabi um, peas with, like, that white wasabi stuff. It was way too hot for me to eat. That's a 4 out of 10. The theming was spectacular. The DJ was great. It's it's um it's the old uh, pilot from the Star Wars or Star Tours ride. The music was great. The atmosphere is a ten, man. But again, we're talking about the food here. Um, they, I don't know why they had to overcomplicate it. Just let just let people take their booze outside. What do you think is going to happen? I don't, why are you so apprehensive? Most people just want to go in and look around and leave. No one's going to linger in there for forty minutes. It's just you're overcomplicating it. I think in a while. Um, It'll be much more simple. You can just walk in, get a drink, and leave. Maybe hang out a little bit and chat, and that'll be fun. Um, I don't know. I, I prefer to hang in standing at the bar. Um, I don't even know how they keep track of the drinks. Because uh, we got up and then we stood at the bar um, where they have beers on tap. I, I, I've, I don't drink anymore, so I didn't taste any of them. But I, I would have had the ales. I can't, I can't tell you really what they tasted like. But... Uh, I like my Java juice. It was good. Um, I, I'm giving it an 11 out of 20. Um, I actually thought there was it was a restaurant type of deal, and then I find out it's only drinks. So again, it's way overhyped, and for the very little payoff. If you're gonna have a bar, just walk in. None of this reservation, like they, ugh, they make it so painful. It doesn't have to be that painful. Anyway, the bottle drinks. Now I was excited. I actually brought one of these home. I had my buddy bring it. I, I left the park early because I I had already been there eight hours. I was tired. I woke up at six. There was no ice in the tub, or it had melted. It was barely cool. Most of them were room temperature in the sun. I didn't even see water in the tub, okay? These things were outside at a stand. Okay, I told the employee he needed some ice bags in there. So, and another customer said, yeah, several ice bags. He said nothing. Um, and there's nothing worse than a $5, $5.50 warm soda, okay? So one out of five for these bottled drinks. Yeah, they look cool, cool souvenir. Make them cold, okay? Otherwise, it's a turd in nice packaging. Hot soda. Are you kidding? Jeez, man. And of course, they got to sell Dasani, who puts salt in the water, which makes you more thirsty. So the milk stand gets 6 out of 20. I weighed that one as 20 because that blue milk was a big deal. They were selling that, and then it ended up disappointing. Docking Bay 7, a 3 out of 10 for breakfast. Ronto Roaster, 7 out of 10. Could be an 8, could be a 9. Oga's Cantina, overcomplicated, 11 out of 20. And those bottle drinks, get. do you not have ice in space? Go to Hoth, get some ice. 28 out of 65. Man, that breakfast was disgusting at Docking Bay. I should have given it a 2. I thought about giving it a 2, but I like the sausage. It really should be a 2. Anyway, so that brings that score to 5.4% out of the 12.5. How I weighed this. The shopping. Um, as far as the lightsaber building, I didn't participate. I've seen the video and what it is. Um, that seems like a good... It seems really fun. However, 
seeing the reviews of people who did it, there's apparently a 30 minute wait to pay. Then you have to show up 20 minutes early and wait to wait, and then 20 minutes to wait. And then there's a 20 mil, uh, minute build process. So it's about a um, 70 minutes uh, of waiting before you actually get in there. So 150 bucks um, as far as the price, it seems kind of fair. I think you can find lightsabers like this for 200, but it's cool because you get to build your own and I think customize it a little more. I never really looked into getting one. I may do this later down the road. I don't know if I'm ready to drop 250 bucks just yet. Now the droid building, I walked in and you could walk right in. You pay and then you go in and you and it didn't seem that packed. So there's no queue line. That was good. It does seem a little bit overpriced. I don't know what happens if you lose the controller. And also, I already have the Sphero. Um, I think I. I, I that's a Shiro. It should be S uh, P H E R E O. Sorry. I knew I screwed something up. I already have the Sphero BB 8 that came out with the Force Awakens. I actually have two, and that I can control with my phone. So I don't really have much of a motivation to buy this big, bulky thing. When, in my opinion, it's a bit sleeker than this droid, which is bulky, and I think it's just a lot of large plastic. And most of it is just empty on the inside. They just made it bigger just because. Um, and I think that's. I don't know, my Sphero is dense. When it gets packed, as compact as can be. So it seems high quality. Um, but eh, I probably won't be building a droid. Now the clothing, the Jedi cosplay uh, is actually high quality. I thought it might be crappy cloth, but it's not. Um, I still think it's overpriced. It's 125 bucks for a Jedi cloak. 24 bucks. I'm pretty sure you could buy that material at like a Walmart or any fabric store and get it for half the price, maybe a third of the price at a tailor. The holocrons were sold out. The marketplace is fun to shop at. Um, it, it's cool to just look at everything. And again, this goes back to the immersion and, and, and the efficiency, which I'll get into later. The first order store was a little bit disappointing. I felt it was small and very limited in the selection. And it really sucks that you can't wear the gear that you buy in the park when you're an adult. That sucks. People like to wear their Disney gear. So I guess they don't want people posing as characters, and I understand. So whatever. It's just it's frustrating. But this is a good spot if you want to wear something to Star Wars Celebration. They're actually pretty good quality stuff. So the Toys Memorabilia, I think they're highly overpriced for what you're getting. Some of the merch, like the, um, I can't remember, Jabba's buddy that, that sits on him. You can get one that sits on your shoulder and he, and he turns his head and stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's really clear that they're going to focus on the merchandise sales on this in this air, in this land. So I'm giving it an 8 out of 10 for shopping. If you want Star Wars stuff... Um, it's a good place. If you're looking to do cosplay and you don't want to go through a tailor, you can just buy it and it looks it'll look fine. So that's 10 percent out of the twelve point five. So now efficiency. Um, efficiency is I broke it down into two different categories: the queue times for attractions, food, and shopping, and crowd control and traffic flow. If you have a, a crowd control situation or a traffic flow situation, like in this picture you're seeing right here, it's going to be a nightmare. You're going to hate it. I can't be in a park when it's like this, and I was afraid that it was going to be like this when the park opened. and I can't be in a park like this. I get annoyed, especially if it's hot, and I just gotta go home. I'm not gonna be in a park when it's like this. This is horrible. And it wasn't like that at all. Um, the attractions, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 for Smuggler's Run. It was, that line moves, and there's so much to look at. Sometimes you actually, people, uh, they kinda hold the line up a little bit because they wanna take a picture of this and take a picture of that. It's actually a good sign. You're distracted. As far as the food, Dark can be 7, 10 out of 10, I walked right up. Ronto's Roasters, 10 out of 10, I walked right up. Olga's Cantina, they, they overcomplicated that thing. It's too much of a pain to get in, and, and, and it annoyed me. I didn't want to sit next to... I, I wanted to stand at the bar. And plus, you're in that cubby hole, you can't see squat. So, 4 out of 10. Shopping, the lightsaber building is too much of a pain. 4 out of 10. The droid building, yeah, you can walk up. You still have to wait for other people to finish. And if some people are stupid, I'm sorry. They just take way too long. But still, that's not their fault. So, I'm giving you a 9 out of 10. The merchandise lines were all like zero, or just a couple people. Even even when I was getting the milk, um, I forgot to put the milk up there under food. I I, I probably waited three minutes. It, it was good. Um, so for queue times, I'm giving it an 85 percent. Good job with the queue times. It's, it's very efficient. This whole land is actually really efficient. The crowd control and the traffic flow. There's three ways in. There's three ways out. It could use a pathway to Toontown. So a little minus for that. Um, the crowd does get corralled through Queer Country when the park opens. I don't like getting corralled anywhere. Just let me go in where I want. Um, it never felt crowded. Um, the movement is very immersive and it's very fluid. I don't feel claustrophobic or trapped. And there's no um, excessively large strollers. They ban those, you know, so you're not going to be tripping over that. And once it gets too packed, they stop people from coming in. So I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. 
Um, it's very efficient. Um, so with a 9 um, for crowd control and an 85 for Q, um, that, that breaks down here to about a 20, just under a 22 out of 25 for efficiency. The whole land is very efficient. I can tell that they thought about this really carefully and I think they should be recognized because efficiency, other people will not recognize it except when it's a problem. When it's a problem, then everybody gets pissed. It's too crowded. I can't walk. The lines are too long. But when everything works, people tend to not give it its due credit, which is why I weigh this right up there with the theming and the, the attractions. It's very important because it can make or break your experience. Um, your queue times in that crowd, you got to control that. And they did a marvelous job. So going back to the five categories. The theming and environmental design and immersion, attractions, food, shopping, and efficiency. And there's how I weighted them. The theming got a perfect score. Attractions got a 13.1 out of 25. Food uh, was 5.4 out of 12.5. Shopping, okay, a 10 out of 12.5. Uh, and for efficiency, almost a perfect score. Um, the Ogas thing screwed it, and the lightsaber thing is not efficient. Uh, Although, you know, I don't want to be too hard on the lightsaber thing. Maybe I should have given it a higher score. Because the alternative is just to wait in a long line in the sun. So that they're thinking about it. Um, I'm going to stick with what I initially gave it, though. So I think the attraction was disappointing, as well as the food. Those were huge, huge uh, penalties that it took. The other stuff's all pretty good. So that total score is 75.4, which is a C. So it's average. Again, that attraction, really disappointing. And the food. Uh, if they had been anywhere near like these two levels, the, the theming and the environment and the efficiency were the strong points of the whole deal. Um, but anyways, this is the grade that I gave it. Uh, yeah, man, I, I was disappointed with the ride and the food. I really was looking forward to that milk, and then I had it, and I was like, oh. And then the ride, I was like, yeah, and then, oh. Um, I don't know. We'll see when... Um, Rise of Resistance, maybe this will go up, but also it might bring more crowds, and maybe this will go down when that goes up, so who knows. But anyways, did you guys go? Did you guys visit? What did you guys think? Leave your comments below, like and subscribe, hit the bell, and I will see you guys later. Okay, bye.